All right guys, welcome to RC Mojo. Last week we put together the electric actuator kit, fitted it and did a quick setup to get it working. This week we're back to the main build for the second half of bag J, the rear bodywork. As happens every so often, I must have missed the record button on the camera, so we already have the lower skirts, M1, 2, 3 and 4, and the front tabs, 2 HH1s. Anyway, we're at step 85, prepping the side skirts. In addition to the skirts themselves, we need four 2x6 self-tappers and three M3x12 grub screws. First we'll fit the tabs, but before we go screwing things in, we need to make sure the nub from the parts tree is nice and flush to the surface. Otherwise you're going to struggle to get the tab to fit onto the chassis. Now we can offer up the tab to the two small posts on MM3 and 4, the front skirts, and screw in the two small self-tappers. The usual advice applies, we don't want to over-tighten them, just make them snug. Towards the back of the skirts we have another post for the grub screws. They want to be threaded in roughly halfway, but it is fairly critical you don't go too far and punch through the outside. In the manual, it says we want 7mm of thread still exposed. So to be safe, thread it in a bit at a time until you can measure 7mm. The other front skirt will need its tab and grub fitted, and the rear skirts need two grubs each. When done, that's step 85 complete. Step 86, fitting the skirts, and the roof sections on the front left box. We need the roof section NN3, the left front and rear skirts, an M3 by 12, four M2 by 8 cap heads, two 3 by 8 self tappers, a 3mm washer and three M3 flange nuts. First a quick note, it's marginally easier to fit the front skirt first because of the way the parts overlap. It's not super critical as there's enough flex in the parts that you can still put it together without much hassle. The grub screws on the rear section line up with a hole and a slot, so all you need to do is offer it up and thread on the nuts. Except the rear one is right between the rear wheels, which does make it a bit tricky to get to. I found it far easier to lift up the side of the truck using a couple of pudding pots under the rear most and one of the front wheels. Then we start by fitting the front nut and the two small screws that go through into the metal bracket. For now, we're just threading everything in a couple of turns so it's still easy to move around. Then to get at the rear nut, we remove the front rear wheel so we can get the nut on and start doing it up with a spanner. Having said that, wait until the rear bodywork is all attached before tightening everything up fully so it can find its position and sit nice and straight. The front section is similar with its nut and two small screws. The difference here is the front uses a tab to lock into the servo mount on the chassis. So make sure it's sitting where it should before installing the screws. Again, everything's still loose for the time being. All the parts have oversized or slotted holes, so if we tighten it all now, nothing's going to line up later in the build. Next, we can fit the small roof section. Now this is where I noticed the missing cross member I mentioned a couple of videos ago. The one that goes across at the front. We'll need to fit it partly because it adds some structure and partly because we need it to mount the roof. We'll need the two M3 plane nuts and the cross member from step 83. Otherwise it's just a case of loosening all the upper and middle fixing screws from one side of the front boxes so we can separate them enough to slot in a cross member. It's also a good idea to remember to slot in the nuts before slotting in the cross member. Then we just tighten up all the screws. Right, now we can fit the roof. All we do is pop a washer over the M3x12 and thread it into the cross member a couple of turns. The roof has a slot that goes over the screw thread. Well, slot it on. Then, while keeping some light downwards pressure on the roof, we nip up the screw. Simple. All that's left are the two 3x8 self-tappers, which screw into the rectangular holes on the rear skirt. Just like the others, we'll leave them just a little bit loose so the panel can find its own position. Step 87. Attaching the right-hand skirts, roof section and exhaust, which will need a bit of glue. We need R9, 10 and 11 to make up the exhaust. A similar set of nuts and bolts. We've got a M3 by 12, four M2 by 6 cap heads, four 3 by 8 self-tappers, two 2 by 8 self-tappers, 
a three millimeter washer, two two millimeter washers, and three M3 flange nuts. We'll start with the exhaust as it'll need a bit of time to harden up before we fit it. Poly cement will work just fine, but I'm gonna use some Plasti Weld as it will make it a little bit easier when we come to smoothing out the seams before we paint it. It won't ooze out, so there's a bit less to sand back. What we do is pop a couple of drops in the slot for the base and fit it. Add some drops around the edge, also adding a bit around the pipe edge too. Then bring the other half in and hold it together for a few seconds while the Plasti Weld melts the plastic. Now we just leave it to harden up. Half an hour or so will probably do as it's not going to be supporting any load, but I left it overnight as it was already getting a bit late. Since fitting the side skirts is identical to the other side, except it's a mirror image, I've done it all off camera. It's the same screws in the same places, just remember to leave them all slightly loose just for the time being. To fit the exhaust, we thread in the two 2x8 two self tappers with the 2mm washers a couple of turns into the posts in the middle of the front box. Then we offer up the exhaust, which has slots that go over the threads. Now we gently press down and nip up the screws. That just leaves the roof, which is the same as the other side, except it has a cutout for the exhaust. Mount it up, and that's step 87 complete. Step 88, the light bar. We need the base DD3, the orange lens GG3, 6 FF3 clear lenses for the ends, 5 FF5 clear lenses for the side, 2 2x6 self tappers, and if you have an MFC you're going to want some LEDs. The clear lenses have two little posts that fit into the holes in the base. We're going to need to glue them in so they don't fall out. However, Plasti Weld isn't going to work on the clear plastic and it definitely won't work on the chrome, so we're going to use some poly cement. It's not ideal, but it is going to do the job, and if you choose the right brand, you should be able to find one with a nice fine metal tip so you can apply tiny amounts accurately so we don't make a mess on the nice chrome. What we want to do is apply a spot of poly cement in the holes, a really tiny amount, then we pop the lenses in, making sure they're all the way down and stood up nice and straight. Once they're all in, leave it to dry so when we're fitting the LEDs we don't knock them off. Alright, some time later and we can fit the LEDs. The LEDs have mounts to sit in on the base, but with Tamiya wiring they can be a bit reluctant to go in. You need to carefully bend the wires near the LEDs to get them to sit right. Unfortunately, Tamiya only supply LEDs for the five front facing slots, but I guess because the MFC can't do wigwag effects, it does kind of make sense. If you're going pure Tamiya, you might want to get an extra pair for the outside facing slots and connect them up to the outputs on the ACU-02 lift controller, which does do wigwag. Once the LEDs are in, we can add a spot of poly cement on them so they don't vibrate loose. Something with a bit more body might be better, Tamiya recommend a rubber cement, but there's a risk of making a bit of a mess. Now we leave that to dry, at least for an hour or so, so it's fairly stable. Then we can offer up the orange lens and thread in the two screws and nip them up. On the bottom of the light bar, Tamiya have added some guides for the wiring, which is handy because it is a bit of a mess. We want to run the wires so they all come out at one end carefully stuffing the wires under the guides. A pair of tweezers makes this a lot easier and makes it all fairly tidy. Step 89, light bar 2, according to Tamiya. We need two R2s and two R6s for the work lights, two DD1s and two R4s for the upper tail lights, EE1 for the big boxy bit, and we'll also need the lenses FF and the GG trees, but I'm not going to fit them just yet, as we've got a bit of painting to do first. Then for screws, we have two M2x10s, four M2x4s, four 1.2x4s, but as we're not fitting the lenses, we're going to skip those and keep them safe, six 2x6 self-tappers, and six 2mm washers. Right, work lights first. We need an M2x10 and a washer for each of them. And oddly, Tamiya provide the light pod with an LED holder, yet there's no hole in the box for the wires. They could have added a pilot hole or maybe a dimple as a drill guide, but there's nothing. Very strange. Anyway, we thread the screw through the slotted hole in the box, through the LED holder and into the pod, and nip them up. 
same on the other side and we have the pods fitted. There's a flat lens that goes on the outside too with the tiny screws but we'll come back to that once we're doing all the custom bits. For the upper tail lights we just need to attach the LED holders on the backs with the 2x6 self tappers. Now by default there isn't a plug and play method of hooking up LEDs to these with an MFC. However it's not too difficult as you can hook them up to the trailer light connector. It carries the two indicators and brake lights which is ideal. Again we'll look at hooking them up when we get going with all the custom work. To fit the pods we need to offer them up to the holes in the box, lining the lugs up with the posts. Then we use the M2x4s with washers to attach them. Keep in mind the threads are small, the screws are short, so be careful not to over tighten them and strip out the threads. And that just leaves the light bar. If you have the LEDs fitted we'll need to pass the wires and connectors through one of the square holes in the top of the box, gently pulling them through until the bar sat on top of the box. Now before we fit the screws we need to make sure all the wires are tucked up out of the way so they don't get trapped. The little clips work rather well but sometimes a wire might pop out when you're not looking. Now we just line up the posts with the holes and install the four 2x6s, nipping them up so they're nice and snug. And there we go, very nice. What isn't so nice is that mass of wires that's really going to get in the way for the rest of the assembly. So I've coiled them up so they're going to stay out of the way. It would be good to sleeve them too so they're not quite so out of control but this will do for now. Step 90 attaching the light bar. This time we need EE2 the front cover for the box, four 3x8 self tappers, three 2x6 self tappers, four 3mm washers and three 2mm washers. First we need to partially thread in the 2x6s with the washers into the three posts along the edge of the box, but we only need to thread them in a turn or so. Next we offer up the slots in the cover to sit between the post and the washer. Then while holding it in place, nip up the screws. They don't need to be super tight, it would be quite easy to mash the slots in the cover. They only need to be snug, maybe plus an extra little touch. To fit the box to the chassis we need the four 3x8 self tappers and 3mm washers. There's four holes just under the small roof sections where we need to thread the screws and washers into, just a turn or so. Then for the tricky bit we need to make sure all the washers are all towards the outside just under the screw heads. Then offer up the box so it slots in over the screws. Now before nipping up the screws double check the washers are in the right place otherwise it's not going to sit right. Then as you're doing them up gently press down on the box to make sure it's fully seated. As the screws start to grab they can push the box up making it sit a little uneven. Nip up all four, tuck in any wiring out of the way and that's step 90 complete. Step 91 left hand bodywork. We're going to need LL1 and 3 the bodywork bits and M3x6, 12 silver 3x8 self tappers and a small metal L bracket. First we're going to fit the bracket to the rear of the rear body section. The bracket mounts with the M3x6 which goes through the plain hole in the bracket. Nip it up and we can start fitting the body to the chassis. Now due to overlaps we need to start with the front. If you fit the rear section first you are going to be finding yourself taking it off again. It might need a bit of a wiggle to sit properly as it's a fairly complex part that's got to be in just the right place. When it is, you can start fitting all the silver screws. Just like the skirts, we're not quite going to do them up all the way just yet, so they can settle in by themselves. Next, the rear section offers up, and we use the rest of the silver screws. Step 92 is pretty much the same as 91. We fit the right-hand body parts with the same screws and the same little bracket. So, since it's the same, here it is done. Very nice. Now might also be a good time to go around and nip up all the nuts and screws so everything is sat nice and square. None of them need to be done up hugely tight, just make them snug plus a little bit extra. Step 93, lenses and covers. Now this step involves many, many tiny screws, 54 to be exact, and since we haven't painted it yet, I think we're going to skip it and come back once we've done all the mods and added the paint. Step 94, body doors 1. All we need is the two HH4 doors, two DD2 door handles, 
and four 2x8 countersunk self-tappers. The door handles just drop into the recess on the outside of the door, then we thread in the screws from the inside. Do it twice, and that's the door's done. Step 95 is more of the same. Some of the screws are a bit of a different length, but the concept is all the same. In addition to the handles, the rear doors also have an extra screw in the middle that mates up with a magnet to keep them closed. Build up the four doors, and they're ready to fit. Step 96, fitting the doors. Now for this step we need two HH8 doors that don't get handles and 28 M2x5 cap heads. Essentially this is another very repetitive step. All the doors mount in the same way. All we do is line up a door with a hinge and thread in the four screws loosely. Then we nip them up and check for alignment. The hinges have quite a bit of flex which will take up most misalignment when the magnets grab but you can still help things along a bit with a bit of extra care. The other doors are all the same, just lots of small screws. So here we are sometime later, one side with all its doors fitted, which of course is only half the story, there's the other side to do too. Okay, that's a major step along the way, it's really just the rear lights and front bumper to go to complete the dry build. So that's 15 or 16 videos and we're not even halfway there. Quite a big project this one. Anyway, that's it for this week. So as always, thanks for watching. Like if you like, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys.